Okay, well, we'd like to welcome you to a Perfect Mind webinar series. Uh, we'll be launching a series of webinars over the next few months, mostly aimed around topics that will help you spread and generate more awareness around the yoga studio that you're operating or if you're teaching at various locations, the teaching that you offer. Um, our goal is to extend to you both best practices as well as any type of ideas we feel will help you elevate your business to the next level without diluting the quality of what you're doing, um, maybe the tone and the culture of your practice. You definitely don't have to quote unquote sell out to be successful as a business person. Um, it's just making intelligent decisions and being aware of the tools that are out there for you to use. So we're really excited to have you today. I'd like to thank you in advance for putting aside the uh, 45 minutes to approximately an hour we'll need today to go over this information. And um, as far as questions go, I don't mind if you want to type them in the chat box during the presentation, but most likely I'll address all questions at the end. A little bit of background about myself. My name is John Malik. I've been wor working with Perfect Mind for roughly 10 years now, and I've consulted personally just a little over 2,000 individual micro businesses, meaning businesses with one to eight staff members, sometimes more than that, but smaller businesses that are looking to operate on a shoestring budget grow the awareness and reach the ultimate dream, which is doing what we love for a living. Today's topic I'm going to hone in on will be Facebook fan pages. And I've done my best to put this presentation um, in a scalable fashion so that it'll apply to all levels of Facebook users. Um, if you don't have a fa uh, Facebook page yet, if you don't have a fan page yet, that is okay. This webinar is the right webinar for you. And if you do have a fan page and you're a pro already, I would also say that this, uh, this webinar will be right for you. However, more of the material that you'll be paying attention to will be at the second portion of it. So without further ado, let's get started. So what is Facebook? Um, everybody has their own kind of attempt or metaphor that they use to explain what it is. The one I prefer is I like to just think of it as this huge Nile River, this, this massive stream of online conversation. It's happening at all times, 24-7, everywhere in the world. Facebook is the largest online stream of conversation. It is technically the most social place on earth, and it's kind of interesting that it's not an actual place, but it is where all conversations tend to start and end every single day. It's a crazy time on the, on the planet Earth right now. What's even crazier is that these conversations are only going to multiply. Um, I attribute a large amount of this to the ease of access. And right now, if you have a smartphone similar to the one that's on the page, why don't you type yes in the chat box? I'm curious to know if you do have a smartphone or not. And further to that, um, have you used a smartphone ever to view a Facebook page or even post to one? Okay, so we're looking at about 50% of you here. So these, these devices, first of all, they're fun to use. It's, it's really cool to be able to pull out the world in your pocket, hold it in your hand, access just about anything, or update everyone you know about what you're doing, or see what everybody else is doing. Um, further to that, I've found that public transport is making a comeback. Traffic in just about every city is becoming unbearable, and a lot of people are finding themselves with this idle time. And as you all know, if you've ever been in an elevator or on a bus or any public area, public conversation is becoming a lost art. Most people tend to just put their head down, pull out a phone, and even if they're not doing anything really intentful, they still stare at it blankly. Well. A lot of people are now replacing that idle time with viewing social pages such as Facebook, especially on a mobile phone. Now, when I work with some schools and studios, they inform me, you know what, I think I kind of already missed the boat on Facebook. The major growth has already happened, and I, I can't see it getting much bigger. Well, I've got a little chart here for you that contradicts that directly. We're looking at only September 2010. This is 30 days, ladies and gentlemen. Now just take a moment to look down and reference each country. You can see that you know, somewhere between 700,000 and 5 million people in one month joined Facebook. That is a ridiculous amount of growth. Now the next thing I hear 
um, and this is usually from the people that are trying to reject the idea of, of participating with Facebook, is that you know the students that I attract, the clientele I work with, they're not really involved in Facebook. They're not the kind of people that go on Facebook. Yeah, well, let's take a look at this graph here. I can see right here that the 25 to 40-year-old range, which I think many of you will agree is part or a large portion of your target market, they're definitely participating. Um, people try to tell me all the time that baby boomers do not participate on Facebook. Well, as you can see, um, now I'm not suggesting anybody over 40 is a ba uh, baby boomer, but the, that, that particular demographic is definitely participating. They're a decent chunk. My father, who is 65 years old, logs on to Facebook multiple times a day. So just in case you were trying to give yourself the excuse not to participate on Facebook because you felt only young teenagers that aren't interested in, in your studio are on it, it may be time to reconsider. So let's just pretend for a moment that we've annihilated all of the excuses or reasons not to, partic uh, not to participate. We agree it's the largest stream of conversation on the planet Earth. We agree that it's continuing to grow, that the conversations are multiplying through the use of smart devices like these iPhones and Blackberries and Droids and etc. Further to that, we, we are going to agree moving forward that everybody we are trying to attract is also participating. So what do we do with this abundant stream of conversation? Well, to start with, please don't try to ignore it or hide it from it. It's, it's not going to help you. It's not that pink elephant that's going to go away. All right? We do need to participate. We have to work with it. So this next slide here, I'm just going to let you take a look at it for a moment. I really want this portion right here to resonate. Here we go. One of my favorite cities on the planet Earth. Here's Venice. Now take a look. We've got this main stream, this huge stream moving through this entire little area, right? What I want you to do is use this visual to understand what a fan page is. What a fan page is, is it's one of those little side alleys or... Well, I don't know if I could call it a road, but it's one of those little places where we irrigate some of the flow of traffic, some of the flow of conversation off that mainstream and over towards our studio. In particularly, our studio's fan page. That's what a Facebook fan page is all about. We're not fighting the traffic. We're not trying to dominate the traffic. All we're trying to do is be interesting, social, and remarkable enough on our fan page that we are able to irrigate some of that flow of conversation over towards our brand name. That's a simple, simple explanation. So let's go a little bit forward and discuss how to develop the most efficient way to irrigate some traffic off of this mainstream towards your fan page and towards your business. Now, most people say, I don't, it's a fan page. I've already got a personal account. Can I just use that? Isn't that a good enough stream? It's on Facebook and it's easy to use. I, I've already got it set up and I have so many friends. So can't I just use my personal account? As you can see, I've made it quite evident. No, you cannot. There's a few main reasons. I'm going to cover just a few of them right now. I, I call them the three big ones. So let's go forward and address reason number one. Reason number one. You need a page on Facebook that is named after or in some way, shape, or form references your business name. An example, ABC Studio. Why? Well, this is because we want to take advantage of all the search engine benefits associated with Facebook. When you search on any of the major social engines or any of the major search engines, so let's name a couple. There's Google. There's Yahoo, Bing, and so forth. Um, the social engines, well, there's Facebook itself. There's Twitter. There's YouTube. There's all these different places that people will search. If you don't have a page on Facebook named after your business, you are going to lose out on all those search benefits. And if you're wondering how many people search a day for things that they're interested in, basically every consumer that has a computer, and I think there's a few of those, is doing this. Ask yourself the question, the last time you wanted to research something, where did you go? I'll take a, a handsome bet and say it wasn't the yellow pages. Most likely, you popped open a Google page and started searching. 
Also, one thing you might not know, and this is really important, if you take anything away from this webinar today, this should be it. Having a personal account that you name after your business is illegal on Facebook. You will eventually try to log in one day only to realize your account has been deleted. I have a very close friend of mine that got you know up to 4,500 fans. He had an amazing page going, but it was a personal account named after his business. His first name and last name were his business. That is illegal. You will be deleted. So you cannot do that. You have to name the personal account after a human being. And then from there, you create a Facebook fan page for your business. Okay? So that's reason number one. And while we're on reason number one, if you already have a fan page, please type yes in the chat box. I'm interested to know a little bit more about my audience here. Fantastic. Okay, so five of you looks like. All right, reason number two, you need a fan page. This is a very important reason. Now, a little bit earlier in this uh, webinar, we discussed that even in September of 2010, the new users joining Facebook is extremely substantial. In the U.S., it was 5 million. In Canada, it was 700,000. So when people join Facebook now, Facebook has this new little tool they called recommended pages. So every time a person joins, these pages are recommended to them based on their interests, their friends' interests, and their region, among some other criteria. It's a little bit of a big brother situation. I don't know how comfortable you feel um, having this Facebook tool know everything about you and recommend your, your pages, but everybody seems to be okay with it or you know the, the pros outweigh the cons, so they're still putting up fairly detailed information about themselves when they create their profile. Based on what they put in that profile, this system will recommend pages. Imagine if everybody who joined Facebook who put health fitness, or even yoga in their interests was recommended to your page. What would that do for your business? Well, I'll tell you one thing. If you don't have a fan page, there's certainly no opportunity to be recommended to the new Facebook users. Okay? So that's reason number two. There's no such thing as recommended personal accounts. It's only the recommended Facebook fan pages. There's suggested friends, but chances are of a new person joining and having you as a suggested friend is very low. Okay? Reason number three, the added features. The Facebook fan page has some additional features that your personal accounts do not have. So let's go through a few of them right now. First up, fans. Fans are an extremely powerful tool. First of all, let's talk a little bit about your brand perception. Now, I think most of you will agree. Right now, if all of us in this uh, webinar needed to go out and buy a pair of running shoes, who are you going to trust? Are you going to trust the person who is attempting to sell them to you, who may be genuine and recommend three pairs, and you know they use the strategy of recommending the, the one that's price point in the middle? Um, possibly. Most likely, though, you trust someone who already has the shoes. What's happening with the consumer trends these days is we're asking our peers about their experiences with a product before we purchase it. And because it's so much easier to communicate these days, it's happening more and more. Example, if I wanted to buy a pair of running shoes today, I would put a post up on Facebook and say, looking at buying a new pair of running shoes, any recommendations for a guy that's you know weighed between 170 and 200 pounds kind of thing? My friends will all recommend maybe New Balance, maybe Saucony. They'll narrow it down so at least when I go to buy something, I'm aware of what are the horrible products, what are the decent ones, and what are the ones that have glowing recommendations. Now, it's kind of a similar thing when they come to your fan page. With a lot of fans, the perception is that you have a strong brand. It makes you appear to be a more trusted brand than the next brand. So my question to you is, would you like to have more fans or less fans than a competitive studio? Well, of course we want more fans. The quicker we get a fan page, the quicker we can start generating those fans. And the brand perception is that you are the quality studio in the area. One thing that is maybe an unfortunate reality for the studios that are more established and a great reality for the studios